What up, Doe Connors? We're going to be doing a very different video today because this one has to do with link leveling. This is not a theoretical video, no theory crafting, no gameplay, just pure facts, pure science, all courtesy of a Dokkan Battle subreddit, geni subreddit genius by the name of Vinny Bones for this masterpiece. This is the best piece of Dokkan literature I have ever read. This was posted two months ago, courtesy of Vinny Bones. 100% of the credit goes to Vinny Bones at Vinny Skeleton on Twitter. This this is just great. So what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be going through some of the main points in this piece and we're going to simplify it as much as possible so that you guys can understand exactly what is going on. Some of you might know, some of you might not. Regardless, you should watch this video and understand what I'm talking about here because this will answer all of your questions from here on out regarding link leveling. So we'll start from the top because I put everything into a little presentation here, a little summary book report. From the top, what are the chances? The chance in a vacuum for a level 1 to go to a level 2 is 8%. From 2 to a 4, or 2 to a 3 is a 5%. And as we continue to incrementally move up, the drop, the, the chances actually plummet, right? So a level 9 to a level 10 is a 0.3% chance in a vacuum. But I keep saying in a vacuum because there are some other factors that factor in to calculating the true percentage of a link actually leveling up. Now I should also mention folks, this is an imperfect science. Just like with medicine, as we continue to gather more data through more experience, experiments, trial and error over the years, we will be able to learn more and answer more questions. Like given day one, for example, people thought certain things about link leveling, which we now have completely disproven. So just like with medicine, it's an ever evolving science. In the future, this could be different, but right now, this is all very relevant, very pertinent information. So you definitely want to be taking this stuff seriously. Stamina. Let's just bust that myth about stamina. Stamina has absolutely nothing to do with link leveling. There is no correlation between a level 1 stamina or a level 100 stamina giving you any sort of alteration in your link probability. There is none. So if you are running anything that costs stamina, that is all that matters. It doesn't matter how much it actually costs. The more you spend, the more you get back. None of that. That doesn't apply. How does the boost work? When you guys are boosting on 23-8, you're thinking to yourself, 23 times 2, that's 46 stamina being spent. Let's go. Double the stamina means double the chance of better links. That is not true. How the boost function works is basically it allows you to run two instances of a singular run at the same time. So let's just say, for example, 5 to a 6 is a 1% chance, right? So if you're boosting it, that is two times. So you're running two individual 1% chances simultaneously in a single run as opposed to two one percent chances on separate runs so all you're basically doing is saving time you are not changing the scale at all you're not doing anything any differently you are simply running two instances at once instead of one and then the second one hopefully that clears that up for you how is the link leveling process actually happening how does this start well if you guys are on 23-8 or any stage when you hit start you effectively create offline mode and what that means is basically during that load screen they are predetermining where those link level drops are going to be on the map it is random so how i like to think about this is basically like you're blindfolded blindfolded and the easter bunny is running around on the map randomly choosing certain panels to bury that egg that link level up egg and maybe maybe it's in this one maybe it's in that one maybe it's in this one with the cyberman in it you'll never know because it's random so when you actually jump into the stage you, two things have to happen. One, it has to be on one of the panels that actually has a Cyberman fight. And the other thing that has to happen is you actually have to land on that Cyberman fight and then actually fight him. So let's just say, for example, you have all level 10s except for one level 6 link. That level 6 has to go up to a level 7 and it gets buried on this particular Cyberman. That is an, that's a very improbable feat to take place for sure. But the more e even more improbable thing is to have that happen and to also allow you to fight that unit. Because let's just say you have that link level 6 up right here, but you miss him. You're not going to be getting it anywhere else. It's only going to be happening right there. So if you miss that, you miss out. But you're not going to know the difference. And so to make this more consistent, what we now need are anchor points. Anchor points are basically guaranteed fights on certain stages that will be constants. They will always be there which will then improve the chances of those link level ups actually happening on those spots with those Cybermen. So if you are running a stage that is 15.2 like this one, you have multiple anchor points to actually count on 
for that link level up egg to be buried under. Hopefully that makes sense. Because that is something that I don't think a lot of people realize when doing these types of things. That is why the debate has been going on between 8-9, 15-2, and 710. These three stages are shorter, well not shorter, but they contain a lot of fights, and also they all contain multiple anchor points that boost the chances of those link level up eggs actually being buried under one of those fights. You would rather depend on the guaranteed ones than depend on the variable ones, which is why effective basically now, or ever since the auto mode thing was a thing, you shouldn't be running 23-8. It is still effective, you still get link level ups occasionally for sure, but it is gonna be far less efficient to do it this way. It costs extra stamina, you are spending more time because you gotta go, you have to do it manually, you can't auto mode this because if you auto mode, the game does whatever it possibly can to get you to the fastest route to the exit, avoiding all fights if possible. That's not the way to go. So that is why this stage is no longer viable and as mentioned in the piece itself, 23-8 should no longer be considered viable. It is a thing of the past. Other thing to talk about. This is the more abstract portion, so work with me here. If you guys get confused, no problem. Post your question in the comments. Either I can answer or a fellow tune can help you out. So here's where it gets complicated. Every stage in the game has a certain value associated with it, sort of a multiplier that can allow for the link leveling process to be enhanced or hurt. So the chance of a certain link getting higher or lower depends on the value or the multiplier associated with a particular stage. 8-9 has a 0.7 multiplier. How? Why? I don't know. That's just they did the due diligence. I didn't do it. I'm just going to take their word for it. 7-10 has a 0.7 multiplier. 15-2 has a 0.8 multiplier. So what does this mean? This means that out of the three, it looks like 15-2 is better. But wait, there are some caveats which we'll talk about. Moving on here, we got the B pan stage that has a value of two. So this is actually a whole number. This is not a fraction of a number like these decimals earlier. This is actually two. The Guru event and the Roshi event. Remember these? These were made to actually boost the link levels of your units at a much higher rate. They both give you a 4.5 value. So what does this mean? How does this work? Let's actually go back to the original post here. This is gonna be some math, so apologies in advance, but we have to talk about this. Let's just say, for example, this link right here in the red, Kamehameha. In a vacuum, the chances of a level one going to a level two is 8%, as we established, right? 8% chance, right. So now, this is no longer in a vacuum. We are on a stage. Let's just say we're gonna be on the Roshi stage, right? The Turtle School Roshi stage. That has a value of 4.5. So how this works is you multiply that 8% chance with the 4.5 and you are ultimately getting a 36% chance. So what this means is on the Roshi stage itself, the likelihood of Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks link leveling up that Kamehameha level 1 to a level 2 is a 36% chance. That's how it works. And that is why only once a day you are allowed to do this because getting a 4.5 multiplier is ridiculous. If we look back at the three main stages that we were looking at, they are all not whole numbers. They are all fractions, which means they're actually lowering the chances of these things to actually take place. How much is a link level one? What are the chances of a link level one going to a link level two on 8-9? 8-9 has a multiplier of 0.7. So you take the 8% chance that we saw from the chart, multiply that by 0.7. What do we get? We get 5.6. So what this means is on 8-9, you have a 5.6% chance of that Gotenks, that Kamehameha going up to a level two. Now this doesn't mean that you enter the fight, you have a 5% chance for it to happen. Like I said before, you not only have to do that, but you also have to remember that you have to get lucky enough to land on the space that has that link level up egg in it. If you don't have that, well, it doesn't matter. So like I said, it's all chance, but hopefully that makes a little bit more sense, but we're not done. So after factoring in all of that stuff, what are the chances of the 710 and the 15-2? Let's actually go back here and take a look in further detail. So here, keep in mind that these numbers are super rough. This is basically an eyeball average without fair amount of critical or clinical trials. So they're just trying to be completely, you know, completely thorough in what they say. This is not an absolute truth. As we continue to get more numbers, we will be able to reinforce these stats even more, but you know, take it with a grain of salt. 
Someone else better with infographics and numbers will post that to the to the sub. Okay. Below that, I'll include a chart that has a rough average of the fights you're guaranteed to hit on any given auto attempt. So now we're going into the auto mode. On 8-9, on average, five fights are guaranteed. 7-10, or 7-10, you have on average seven to eight fights guaranteed. 15-2, five to six fights are guaranteed, more likely leaning towards the six. Okay? So that's how many fights we have guaranteed since we're considering doing this in full auto. So doing some quick math, we can determine the following in the next chart. The left column again is being the stage and the right being given the chance of success that a level nine to level 10 link on any given trial will take place. On 8-9, assuming that we have the 0.7 multiplier and that five fights are given, we have a 1.05% chance of a level nine happening on, or a level nine going to a level 10 happening on 8-9. On 15-2, given that you have almost six fights every single time guaranteed, and given the fact that the multiplier is 0.8 instead of 0.7, they have determined that the chance of a level nine going to a level 10 on that stage on any given time is 1.38%. Lastly, 710, with the most amount of guaranteed fights available and a 0.7 multiplier, it is determined that this has the highest probability overall of a level nine going to a level 10. So what this means basically is you should be running your stages, your link level grinds through 710 on full auto so that you can maximize the chance of getting that link level 10. This is not a guarantee. This is all very rough estimates, but still from some pretty solid empirical data that they've accumulated over the years. But yeah, there you have it. The actual best stage is 710. It is not 8-9, it is not 15-2. If anything, 15-2 is determined as the best manual stage. The reason why 15-2 can be deemed as the best manual stage is based on the fact that some of the randomly appearing Cybermen do happen to show up right before these anchor points, which means you only have to use whatever number you can roll to land on this, because after this, all you need is one potential space and you could use a six, you could use a five or a four, you will then immediately stop and fight this fight too. So that is a very favorable thing to have when trying to cover all possible fights. 15-2 is good for manual because it allows for full coverage. That boosts the efficacy of that stage for link level grinding. So I know I threw a whole bunch of stuff at you guys. This might've been very confusing. Hopefully some of you understood some of this. If you didn't, I do encourage you to once again, read through this yourselves, maybe have somebody else help explain it to you. Maybe jump into one of my voice chats on Sundays in the Discord, we can talk about this in more detail so that you guys can understand this, but it's very fascinating stuff to think about. Now, I, I do wanna mention, because a lot of people are probably gonna ask, well, Truth says 8-9 is better. What Truth is saying is a variable that is not even considered in this, really. And that is the timing factor. What we're talking about in this piece is prioritizing efficiency over time, convenience. Truth likes to link level like crazy. So on 8-9, because there are fewer fights, because it is a pretty fast stage to run through, he is able to constantly churn out more and more instances of fights happening, where in a large quantity, he could probably cover the same amount of fights as somebody would who runs full auto on 710. But in terms of practicality, efficiency, convenience, it is still gonna be better overall to run 710 because of all of the data that we just demonstrated or talked about, as well as the fact that you don't have to pick up your phone as much, you know? It's not a race to link level grind. You wanna actually use the auto mode feature on your device to link level. So why not just put it down for a couple of minutes instead of having to pick it up every 30 seconds? You know, I'm being, a, I'm a little dramatic there, but hopefully that makes sense. So I'm gonna wrap it up here. A lot of information that was just thrown at you. Most of you probably might be lost. Hopefully you guys were able to get this because I did and I am so glad that I got to learn all this because now I have an even better understanding and appreciation for the fine art that is link leveling in this game. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like down below and let me know in the comments if you are completely lost or if you are not, if you actually understood some of this. Let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions about all of this stuff and did this change your mind regarding the 710, 8-9 debate, 15-2? Let me know. Just talk to me in the comments down below. Also, be sure to subscribe for more dope content in the future and click the notification bell so that you let YouTube know you want to see more of my stuff. Do it. Thanks again. Stay tuned and always remember to Dokkan responsibly.